Now, locally, we have got some cooler temperatures. John Elliott has the latest on that. And we, I mean, the contrast. Yes. They're hanging on for dear life, yep. literally, and we are enjoying some great fall weather. Uh, thank you for spending lunchtime with us. Want to check in with the uh, weather watchers, some reports coming in, and it's the mid 60s, but this was an interesting and keen observation from Denise Gibson. She says this overnight temps got into the 40s for the first time this fall. Tonight, the coldest night since May or April for some. And again, some pretty pictures. I thought you'd like that. Uh, and this I love from Tony. Really pretty color. Starting to see a lot more variety of color. And I just wanted to share this because there are a lot of fun decorations out there. But see, it's a phantom. Uh, the wind is going to be an issue. So want to make sure that you're ready for the wind. In fact, talking about wind and temperature, wind chills tonight. Denise and everybody, it's going to be cold. We could see wind chills tonight in the 20s now for parts of the Hudson Valley. This is, I mean, serious situation. We're not mixing in moisture. We're not talking about an ice event. It's just going to be very cold overnight tonight into your day tomorrow. We had a few showers this morning. There's instability to the north. Stray shower can't be ruled out, but will not be widespread. So it should be fine for the Mets and for the big kids and little kids after school. 64 degrees, and look at these skies, just beautiful. So it's a cooler blend of sun and clouds, 66. A very cold night tonight, bottoming out as far as temperatures tomorrow overall. Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon. And then Friday, hey, that's an October gem at 68. Comfortable weather. And then Friday into Saturday, a nice warm up. We are going to see some warmer temperatures. Next chance for rain is going to come in on Sunday afternoon. Maybe Sunday. And is more in play at morning hours. We are going to see some changes, but the numbers are going to be nice for our weekend. Want to share again some stats on this storm. We are starting to see a lot of severe weather breakout. Wide, well, there's a tornado watch for a good part of South Florida. We've already seen some uh, pretty vigorous tornadoes. The hurricane, I know, it's like a full buffet, 145 miles an hour. It is moving northeast at 17, but there's a little bit more of a trend to the south of Tampa Bay. So that means when you have that storm surge coming in, it's reverse for the bay, but it's going to be bad for Sarasota and Point South. Fort Myers is uh, going to see potentially a lot more in the way of storm surge when we talk about that 10 to 15 foot. Look at the future cast bringing in rain. Rain is going to be a huge issue from Gulf Coast to Atlantic Coast. This is still going to be a hurricane all the way through the peninsula. And then we'll see some big swells for the Carolinas, but thankfully no impact there. They're still cleaning up. The surge continues in North Carolina. Look at this. See this? We'll timestamp. This is tonight. Already those almost hurricane force winds from Fort Myers to Sarasota into Tarpon Springs. And then that just pushes right through during the course of the afternoon. By this time tomorrow, worst of it over on the Gulf. But you still have hurricane force winds on the Atlantic side as well. Power outages could just follow that. We could wipe out power for central Florida. It's just going to follow the storm across. Again, we'll be monitoring that and counting our blessings because in our area, few clouds, very cold tonight. And then after a chilly Thursday, a warm up into the weekend. Cindy? John, thank you.